Good morning, my friends. It's time for a little coffee and a little morning uh, inspiration from Frederick. So let's get the coffee going. And, uh, and I want to just share, like, in the next three minutes, five minutes, um, what it is is I want to play you a clip from that movie Apollo 13. Remember, like, Tom Hanks... Uh, Kevin Bacon, Ed Harris, and um, oh, what's that other guy's name? He passed away this year, I think. He was in the Titanic. Bill Paxton. Remember Bill Paxton? Um, also, Gary Sinise, Kathleen Quinlan, Tracy Reiner. They're all in this movie. It's uh, Apollo 13. And kind of the theme of this morning's little thought. Oh, six o'clock. So the theme is, let's work the problem, people. So it kind of starts off um, with a very important part of the film. And we'll take uh, two minutes and I'll play it for you, okay? Okay. Mmm, coffee. You make a difference. So let's... Uh, Let's go ahead over to the TV and watch this little clip. It's crazy. Uh, I think it's fantastic. I think you're going to like it. Uh, Got to get the clip set up, right? So. You're telling me you can only give our guys 45 hours? That brings them to about there. Gentlemen, that's not acceptable. Power is everything. Amen. Without it, they don't talk to us. They don't correct their trajectory. They don't turn the heat shield around. We gotta turn everything off. Now. They're not gonna make it to re-entry. What do you mean everything? With everything on, the one draws 60 amps. At that rate, in 16 hours, the batteries are dead, not 45. And so is the crew. We gotta get them down to 12 amps. 12 amps? How many of them? You can't run a vacuum cleaner on 12 amps, John. You gotta turn it off. You gotta turn off the radars, cabin heater, instrument displays, the guidance computer, the whole smack. Whoa, well, guidance computer? Well, what if they need to do another burn? Gee, they won't even know which way they're pointing. The more time we talk down here, the more juice they waste up there. I've been looking at the data for the past hour. That's the deal? That's the deal. Okay, John. And then we finish the burn, we'll power down the line. All right. Now, in the meantime, we're going to have a frozen command module up there. In a couple days, we're going to have to power it up, use nothing but the re-entry batteries. We've been tried before. Hell, we've never even simulated it before, Gene. Well, we're going to have to figure it out. I want people in our simulators working re-entry scenarios. I want you guys to find every engineer design, every switch, every circuit, every transistor, and every light bulb that's up there. Then I want you to talk to the guy in the assembly line who actually built the thing. Find out how to squeeze every amp out of both of these goddamn machines. I want this mark all the way back to Earth with time to spare. We never lost an American in space. We're sure as hell not going to lose one on my watch. Failure is not an option. Oh, wow, hey? Failure is not an option. Man, Ed Harris is a great actor. So, <clears throat> let's just go uh, with a little thought process I have. I read from my book, and uh, this is it. So many things went wrong with Apollo 13, the moon mission. It seemed jinxed. Four days before the launch, a reporter asked astro astronauts Lavelle, Hayes, and Mattingly if the number 13 bothered them. Apollo 13 lifting off at 1300 hours and 13 minutes and entering the moon's gravity on April 13th. You see, the astronauts knew that a lot could potentially go wrong, though not due to bad luck, but they also knew that they were well trained and they had a dedicated professional team behind them. But two days before the launch, Mattingly having been exposed to the measles, he's replaced by Jack Swigger. After liftoff, trouble begins when Swigger does a routine stir of the oxygen tanks, causing an explosion in the command module Odyssey. 
Mission Control cancels the moon landing and orders all three astronauts to move into the Aquarius, which is a two-man lunar excursion module, LEM. They must get back to Earth before their oxygen runs out, and to save energy, they shut down the power and huddle in the cold. It gets intense if you've ever seen the film. And seeking solutions in how to get the astronauts back, we come to the clip that we just watched. Flight director Gene Kranz tells the men of Mission Control, and remember this is Ed Harris's character, and he says, failure is not an option. Let's work the problem, people. And later, Houston realizes the Aquarius wasn't built to filter out all the carbon dioxide created by three men. But an engineering team assembled in Houston, a replicate of every available part, the astronauts can stabilize. Sorry, let me read that again, all right? Later, Houston realizes the Aquarius wasn't built to filter out all the carbon dioxide created by three men. An engineering team is assembled in Houston. A replicate of every available part of the astronauts can... Cannibalize is dumped on the table. Oh, okay. So they take all the parts that they have up in space, they put it on the table, and the team of engineers is told, this is all you have to work with. Now fix the problem. So, these astronauts, these engineers, they come up with this crude invention, and they tell the people up in space in Apollo 13, all right, this is what you're gonna do. And I mean, they're using socks and a flight plan cover, duct tape, amongst other things to make this air filter. After the climatic re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere, the astronauts splash down safely thanks to their courage and training and the ingenuity of their ground crew. Working together, they transformed a bleak, jinxed moon mission into a victory over every problem encountered. Now, I believe in the big guy upstairs. I read the big book, you know, and it says that a great deal uh, there's a lot in there about the importance of sticking together and using new methods to overcome opposition. There's a leader there in the story of Nehemiah and his men while rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem. They were forced to improvise again and again to meet challenges. And like them, you and I, we must work together and face problems with both courage and ingenuity. And here is a famous inspiring quote, motivational quote for me that I read in the Bible. It says, two are better than one because they have a good return for their work. If one falls down, his friend can help him up. I believe that we're created to be in relationship. You know, we're not meant to live this life alone. We need each other, just like we need air. You know, and I suppose the question I have to leave with you today is this. Have you ever been up against a problem amid insurmountable odds? Did you have the mindset that failure is not an option? If you had that, would the results have been different? Are you currently in a tough situation right now? Perhaps a friend or a team of people can give you a little bit of hope, give you a new way of thinking, a little perspective, and help you work through the problem. Now. I believe that stories are the key to understanding life. That's why I'm a storyteller. It's why I'm an actor. It's why I do what I do, make YouTube videos. I believe that you cannot make it through this life alone. It's, it's, it's too hard. It'll keep you beat down. And there's just more joy with people. And so my encouragement is no matter what you're facing, it could be an Apollo 13 mission in your own life. You know, it could be problems left and right with your family, with your friends, with your job, with your career, with whatever it is. And no matter what you're facing, don't give up. Don't give up hope. Invite people in. Ask for help. And together, you know, you're going to make it through this, I promise. So until tomorrow, God love you. May the big guy upstairs, you know, bless you. And may you turn around and bless others with that blessing. All right, this is Frederick Nelson Monowich. At Ruah is the breath of life, changing the world. One video at a time, one story at a time, one moment at a time, one person at a time.